Another example which I would like to speak with you about is the project of Yokohama International Port Terminal by former uh, office from London called Foreign Office Architects. It was founded by Farshid Musavi and Alejandro Serra. Uh, the office dissolved in 2011, but before that they produced a number of highly innovative and creative projects. Among them is the Yokohama Terminal from the 1990s completed in the year uh, 2002. The project was uh, selected after a competition in which Rem Kolhas was part of the jury and it uh, is one of the most innovative projects of that time. The difference between the Yokohama Terminal and other projects that we previously saw, for example the work of uh, Zaha Hadid uh, with parametric design or of uh, Frank Gehry in terms of sculpture of forms is that the work of foreign office architects is based on typology and also on programmatic and typological generation of the form. Which means that while the work of Frank Gehry is mainly designed as a sculptural formal project that focuses on the exterior of the building, on the spectacular aspect of the facade of the building, as many other uh, architects who use complex geometry, the work of foreign office architects is different. Their projects come from very sophisticated typological research and programmatic research. They study precisely the circulation, the typologies, the structural systems, the circulation uh, between different levels, the surfaces that constitute uh, the projects, and then all this mix of uh, different parameters and consideration lead to a, a very distinct project. Um, as an example of their work and as a, a summary of what the work by the office produced in the first seven years is the book Foas Arc. It's a small uh, green book in terms of size, big book in terms of content and a number of pages. Within that book you can see how every project is very different and comes from a number of different considerations. The Yokohama Terminal, their biggest and uh, certainly most famous project, was uh, designed thinking of three different surfaces. The surface on the ground plane, the intermediate surface which is the plane where people walk to uh, in order to get to uh, the ships or to the bridges that lead to the ships and the top surface uh, which was the surface of the roof. The project uh, comes from the diagram of no return. So basically a diagram with which people arrive to the uh, port terminal, get inside, go to the ticket area, go to the lounges and lobbies, the waiting area, reach their gate and then embark on uh, the ships. Or when they come back from the ships they go the other way. This diagram led them to play with these three surfaces. Remember that in the 90s, the single surface projects, as for example the work of Dealer and Scofidia, were very much uh, a topic of, uh, of exploration. In the Yokohama terminal, the three surfaces merge, they open, they close, they touch, they uh, go between levels, and this movement of the surfaces and what is what allows people to circulate within the different floors. The structure of the building, after deciding that it would be made of, of, uh, of typological uh, surfaces, was uh, designed with a single, uh, with something called the folded plate system. Uh, with a project like this, where we have the typology of, uh, of the surface, that creates morphology within different planes. The classical structure of, of a grid of pillars would not have been uh, adapted, would, ha would have contradicted with the idea of having large surfaces that are sustained with these big vaults or, or generated by the deformation of the planes. That is why uh, FOA decided to use this folded plate or uh, essentially a surface similar to 
the Gothic uh, folded plate uh, structures that are used in cathedrals or also used in the Art Deco architecture in the uh, United States from the 1920s and 30s where you have triangular shapes that alter and uh, create this uh, very unique uh, variation of planes that is not just formally spectacular but also structurally very stable. The project was designed entirely out of steel, so the structure is made entirely out of steel except the foundation which has parts in concrete. This steel structure allows for it to be built with folded plates in which the different surfaces are welded uh, between them. This also allows for a very uh, interesting variation which is between the different planes. Since the surface of the plane is curved and it's moving and it's altering, the folded plate itself can, can change and it changes according to the section. The program designed, used to design this project is MicroStation from uh, Bentley Systems. And this program allowed them to create a number of uh, hundreds of different sections to split the project in different sections. And essentially every section was completely different from the previous one. It was very difficult to build, but thanks to the skills and the knowledge of uh, the Japanese engineers and, and craftsmen, they were able to build the project. And the result is rather spectacular. We have this huge space, for example, when we enter on the ground floor, the huge space of, um, of the parking lot in which we have this large surface that goes from one side to another of the terminal without any intermediate support. Then the surface goes up to the level of the lower surface, goes up to the level of the ticket space or the lounges. And then it deforms and can go all the way to the roof. So essentially, there is this variation and alternation between the three surfaces. The roof that merges goes down and then merges again and goes further down uh, to the ground floor. The roof is designed as a continuous topology. It has uh, grass surfaces. So when we are on the top, we have the feeling of being on this big lawn. And there are also wooden planes that also curve to the sides and give us the idea of being on the top of a ship. Remember that the ships traditionally were designed with, with wooden floors and wood is also something that we often find in waterfronts because it's a very resistant material that can withstand the wind and the salt from the water as opposed to other materials. This project uh, brought something very unique uh, and something quite innovative. It was one of the first projects where the power of digital technology and computation was used to its full extent. A project like this could have never been designed without the use of a computer. And in a way, it is a project that came purely out of uh, computer-generated design, which allowed in the design phase to be able to produce these uh, unique shapes and allowed later also in the construction phase which allowed for it to uh, make these complex geometries to be able to build these complex geometry uh, by splitting them in sections and by uh, connecting them according to very specific uh, computer generated uh, drawings. The project as a result has these very special moments in the interior. There are surfaces that go from being floor to being wall to being ceiling, as we can see in the interior. These surfaces also create rather unexpected moments. The project is full of these spaces that are undefined and spaces that the users themselves uh, give some use, either a place to rest, a place to sit, a place to draw, a place to do um, skateboarding or just to uh, experience as a, a, a pad or a, a place that we 
go through while we uh, get, while we walk to the terminal or to the ship that we are boarding onto. The project was very inspirational for a number of other um, architectural projects that were designed with the same idea of the morphology of single surfaces that intersect and that can fold and that can create uh, beautiful geometries that also respond to the complex programs and the complex uh, internal need of the project.